Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up uh, wall hugging. So what I mean by wall hugging is basically this, what you see right here. So you can walk up to a wall, you can press a button, and then your character will kind of turn his back to the wall and he'll walk left and right on the wall. And then just to kind of show you before we get into it exactly how it'll behave at the end of the tutorial, I just set up a little course here to show you how it works. Um, so let me just demo that real quick. So it works um, pretty well over surfaces that are a little bumpy. Um, so obviously I don't have like foot IK going on here, but you could add that if you wanted. But I just wanted to show that you can walk over things um, without it messing up. Similarly, you can um, walk across like pillars and your character will kind of smoothly move in and out of the pillars if it runs into something like that. Um, if he runs into something he can't walk up, he'll just stop. Uh, another thing is if you're on a ramp and you press it, he'll kind of correctly go up the ramp to get to the wall. And then you can also, you know, like I was showing before, you can also walk down surfaces if the surface is not too high. Um, so like right here, for example, if you're wall hugging and then you walk off the surface, your character will switch to falling and he'll fall off the ledge. And then also it works um, around the outside objects. So you can see as I walk around the object, my character rotates to face around the object or to face away from the object. And then it even works for something that's kind of awkward shaped like this sphere. And it also works around the inside of something. So if you're here, it will pretty nicely move around the inside of walls as well. Um, so that's the extent of what this tutorial will cover. Obviously there's more you can add to it if you want, but this is gonna be a really good starting place for something like this. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. So like always, we're gonna be doing this from scratch. I'm going to be using Unreal Engine 5 Early Access. I believe it is, let me see. Um, so I'm on 5.0 Early Access 2. Now you don't have to be on this version. Um, this will work just fine in 4.26 or 7 or whatever. Um, but I'm just using Unreal Engine 5 simply because it's the latest version and it works just fine. But like I said, it will work fine in any other version. I'm not doing anything that's specific to Unreal Engine 5. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this and then select games. And we wanna do third person, blueprints. Uh, we don't need any starter content. So we'll just call this wall hug tutorial and then go ahead and create the project. And then I'm just gonna move this over here just so I have something to reference while it's launching. All right, so here we have just a fresh project. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is add in those animations. So if you look in the description of this video, there'll be a link to a download. And if you download the folder, it will look something like this. So I included the FBX files here, and I also included the U assets. So either way you want to add them to the project is fine. Um, I'm just gonna add the FBX files because that's the easiest. So let me move this over here real quick. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into blueprints, or sorry, we wanna go into mannequin animation, and we're just gonna add our animations here. So to do that, all you need to do is take these three FBX files and drag them into the scene. And then you wanna select your UE4 mannequin skeleton, and then make sure all this is just default, and then hit import all. And then you can open them up just to see what they are and make sure it worked. So we got idle, which is him just idling. And then we got moving left and moving right. So one thing you'll notice here is he's actually physically moving. So we don't actually want that um, because we're gonna be doing the movement of him ourselves. So what we wanna do is in the asset details of each one of these animations, we wanna search for root and we wanna hit force root lock. And you'll notice when we press that, it makes it so he doesn't actually move. So he's not actually going anywhere. He's just animated in place. So we want to do that for each one. So I did it for the right one. So let me do it for the left. And we'll also do it for idle. <coughs> all right, so we can do file and save all. Okay, so now we have our animations that we want. Um, the next thing we want to do with these animations is we want to create a blend space. Um, so that way we can blend between moving left, moving right, and just idling. So we're just gonna go ahead and create a very simple one of those. So let's right, cl uh, right click in the same folder and go to animation, 
and go to, let's see, blend space 1D. And 1D stands for one dimensional because this is a one dimensional blend space in the sense that we're only moving in one dimension left and right. So let's go ahead and create that. And then again, make sure you select the Unreal Engine 4 skeleton since that's the one we're using. And I'm just gonna call it um, BS underscore wall hog. And BS just stands for blend space. And then let's open this guy up. So what we wanna do is we wanna add those three animations to this blend space. If you've never used a blend space before, this will still be pretty simple. Um, I'll try to explain it the best I can, but basically what we wanna do uh, is over here, let's see, I believe under axis settings and horizontal axis, I wanna expand this. And this will look very similar in other versions. You just basically wanna find where you're setting the horizontal axes. And then we wanna set the name to like direction, we'll call it. And then for the minimum value, Actually, let me double check what I did in my other project just so I don't get this backwards. One second. Okay, so yeah, so I used negative one here. So this is gonna be um, left. And then for right, we're gonna do, or for the axis value, the maximum axis value, we're gonna do one. And then the number of grid divisions, we could bump this down to two, and that'll change these little lines down here. If you notice when it's four, you have three of these bars in the middle, and when I change it to two, we only get one. And that's because we only need one division. So that way we can set it up like this. So if we take our anim wall hug left, we can drag it in and put it over here all the way on the left. And then if we take our anim hug idle, we can drop it right here in the middle. And then we wanna take our right and drop it on the right side. So in Unreal Engine 4, there'll be a little green node in here. If you don't see a little green node that you can drag around, um, sometimes you just have to close this and reopen it and then you'll see a little green node right here in the middle. In Unreal Engine 5, I think the only way you can move it is if you hold down Shift and then just move your mouse, it will move it. But this basically demos what he looks like. So if I pass in a one value to the blend space, it will look like this. If I pass in zero, it will look like this. And if I pass in negative one, it will look like this. So this controls which way he walks and it does some blending if we need it to. Okay, so the only other thing we wanna change in here is if we search for interpolation time, um, we want to set this to something other than zero, just so there's a little bit of blending that happens whenever we're switching between them. So I'm going to bump this up to 0 0.15. You don't want it to be too high, otherwise it will look like if there's a delay when you start walking. So 0 0.15 is good. Okay, so now we have our animations imported and we have our blend space set up. So now we can actually begin writing the code. So let's go back here to our content folder. And then we need to create some files. So let's see here. So let's go into our third person BP folder and then let's make a new folder in here. And we will call this wall hug. So pretty much everything related to wall hug, we're just gonna put it inside of here. And I think we only need two files. So the first one we want, let's go ahead and right click. We're gonna put the wall hugging logic inside of its own component. So that way um, it can be reused by Maybe you have AI in your game, or you have multiple players. Um, since it's in a component, or we're gonna put it in a component, you could much more easily reuse it for different characters in your game, as opposed to just throwing it in the player. And then the other reason we're putting it in a component is just so it's more self-contained and it's not just um, you know scattered all throughout the player blueprint like a lot of tutorials do. So let's hit blueprint class, and then we're gonna go to actor component and select this. And we'll just call this BP for blueprint underscore wall hug component. And then the other thing we're gonna need here since we're already here is an enumeration for keeping track of the current state of the wall hug. So let's just right click and make this real quick or real quick. Um, so I'm gonna go to blueprints and then enumeration. And we're gonna call this E for enumeration wall hug state. Now, if you've never used an enumeration before, um, they're pretty simple. Um, so if you open it up, it'll be easier to explain here. So just open this up, and then basically you just have this button up here where you can add new entries into the enumeration. And so enumerations can have as many entries as you want. And so let's just add one to see what it does. So when we hit it, it adds a new entry here. You can see it has a display name and it has a description. Uh, the description doesn't really matter. Um, in, in our case, you can you can write a description if you want, but it doesn't affect anything. It's just to you know help help you out or help other people out. But what we want to do is we want to add three of these entries. So we're going to hit one, two, so that way we have three entries, and then we're going to change the name of them. 
So again, this is the wall hug state. So these are the different states you can be in while you're wall hugging. So the first state we can be in is none. And so this means that we're not actually wall hugging anything at the moment. Uh, the next state that we can be in is moving to wall. So this is the state um, that you're in right after you press the key to attach to the wall, but you're not quite to the wall yet. So if you look at my other project, just so this makes more sense, so this is my other project, you'll notice if you look carefully, when I press the key, my character kind of moves to the wall and he rotates around in circles. So during that time when he's moving to the wall and he's rotating to the correct orientation, he's in that state of moving to wall. And then the final state is obviously on wall. So this is, of course, the state when he's walking back and forth and he's attached to the wall. So this will just help us later um, when we are writing this component. Um, okay, and then the one other thing we need, which we'll just create this real quick, since we're just creating files right now, let's go back to uh, content, third person, BP, and then blueprints. And then inside of here, let's right click and make an another, uh, another enumeration. And so, just like the other enumeration we made, this one's going to help us keep track of states, but this is going to keep us, or this is going to help us keep track of the player state. So the player can either be um, not wall hugging or wall hugging at the moment. And the reason we're making an enumeration for this and not just making a Boolean is because if later on down the road, let's say you add some other sort of movement mode into your game, like wall running or climbing a ladder or something like that. Um, instead of having a bunch of different bulls for is wall climbing, is wall running, is climbing ladder, it makes it a lot simpler if you just add one enumeration and then you add entries into that enumeration for each type that you can be in. So although it's not really necessary to use an enumeration in this case, I'm just using one so that it's easily expandable later. So we're just going to call this E uh, movement state and then we'll open this up. And so we're going to add two in this case. So we want one for just default. So this is what you're going to start in when you're just walking around normally, you're going to be in default. And then once you start wall hugging, you're going to go into the wall hug state. So again, like I was saying, if you add more things in later, like climbing a ladder, you, know, you could say on ladder or something like that. And this will just help you keep track of it a lot easier than making a ton of booleans. But I'm going to delete this one because we don't, we don't want to do ladders. Okay, so we got that. We got our two enumerations. We can just close these guys. Uh, we can close the sky as well. And I think we can actually start coding things now. So we're going to start inside of the third person character um, to start with the input detection. But again, the majority of the code is going to be inside of this component we created. But let's go ahead and start here. So let's open up our third person character. And then we want to basically add some code in here that detects when we press the key to attach to the wall. So to do that, we need to first add an input binding. So let's go up here to edit project settings. And then on the left, you'll see input. We want to select that. And we want to add a new action mapping. So if we hit this little plus button here, we can add a new action mapping. And we'll just call this wall hug. And then if you click this little button here, you can just select the key you want. So I'm going to click it and press E. So we'll say E to wall hug. If you're on a really old version of Unreal, you won't have this button. You'll just have to select the key from this drop down and search for it. But OK, so we have wall hug and we have E. So that's good. So now we can come back here to our third person character blueprint and we can right click and we can now search for that. So if we search for just wall hug. You will see there is a input action events wall hug. And so we want to select that. So when we press wall hug, we want to do one of two things, right? So if we're currently on a wall, if we're currently wall hugging, we want to stop wall hugging the wall. Um, but if we're not on a wall, then we want to start wall hugging it. So the first thing we want to check is whether or not we are actually on a wall. And that's why we made that enumeration for the movement state. So let's add a variable inside of our character to keep track of which movement state we're in. So we'll just call this movement state. And then we'll change the type of it right here to our E movement state. Make sure you select movement state and not movement mode. Movement mode is like a built-in thing in Unreal. You don't need to worry about that, but make sure you select the right one, movement state. And then we can also set this to private over here um, simply because nobody else needs access to it. And so let's drag this guy in and say get, and then we'll drag after this and do a switch statement. And so hook that up. So what we're checking right here is what we are currently doing. So like I said before, if we're not uh, currently on the wall, then it's going to be default. And in this case, we want to try to begin the wall run. 
And so that code we're going to need to write inside of our wall run component. So let's actually go ahead and add the wall run component to our character. So up here at the top left, you'll see an add button. In older versions of Unreal, this is a big green button that says add component. But in Unreal Engine 5, they made it smaller, so it's harder to find. And then we want to select, or we want to search for uh, wall hug component and select that. And you'll see it adds it right down here. You can rename it if you want. I'm just going to leave it as this. Drag this guy in. And then we will eventually want to drag off of this. And we'll want to call something like, you know, begin wall run, right? Or begin, uh, begin wall hug. But we don't have that yet. Um, so we'll just leave it like this. And then uh, the next thing we'll want to do is we want to drag in our set movement state. And we're going to want to set this to wall hug because we are on the wall. And so we'll hook this up to the default. Okay, so obviously we need to write some code right here, but we can't do that because we don't have a function for it yet. So let's go ahead and start writing that. Um, okay, so let's go back here and then let's go it to our wall hug component, which I think we put inside of here. Yes, we did. All right. Um, sorry, let me open this on my other monitor. All right, so this is where the majority of the code is going to live. Um, like all the logic and the line traces, all that good stuff is gonna be inside of here. Oh, actually, let me let me go back. Let's do one more thing over here. I forgot to do this in my example at the beginning, but I was thinking about this earlier. We should definitely do this. So we also wanna make sure um, before we just start wall hugging, we wanna make sure that we're also not in the air. So, because obviously we don't wanna try, we don't wanna start wall hugging if we're in the air, like if we're falling. So let's also check that. Let's drag in the character movement component and just say is falling. And then let's drag off of this and do a not boolean because we want to make sure we're not falling. And then we'll drag off of this and do a branch. And there we go. Okay. And so we obviously have some more stuff to do here, but this is good for right now. We'll just drag this guy over here. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to make sure I didn't forget to do that later. So, okay, back here. So we can just delete this stuff, I think. Well, actually, we needed the begin play. Let's add back begin play. Sorry. Um, so in begin play, we just want to save a reference to our character that owns us, because we're inside of a component right now. And our parent, we know that our parent is a character, because our third person character is obviously a character. So what we want to do is we want to say, uh, right click, get owner. And you'll see this returns to us an actor. Um, but in our case, we know that our owner is going to be a character um, because you wouldn't ever add this component to something that's not a character. Even if you're adding it to some sort of AI or some other type of player, uh, that thing's still going to be a character. And we need it to be a character in order for this to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to say cast to, sorry, cast to character. Hook that up. And then we're just going to right click on this guy, promote to a variable. And we will call this... Um, uh, owning character, and we will also come over here and make this private. Okay, so this is just going to make it easier so we don't have to cast everywhere later. We can just simply use this guy. But the real function we want to make right now is a function that allows us to begin wall running, right? Because when we're back over here and we hit our wall, or, or sorry, I keep saying wall running. <laughs> If I say wall run, just know that I mean wall hug. I've done so much stuff with wall running in the past that when I say wall, I mean you think of wall running, but just a disclaimer, if I say wall running, I'm really talking about wall hugging. I don't know how many times I've messed that up already, but probably a few. Okay, so anyways, we wanna make a function that begins the wall hugging. So, so we wouldn't be able to call it right here. So let's come over here and let's make a new function and we'll call it, we're actually gonna call it try begin wall hug. And the reason we're calling it try is because it might not succeed, right? Because if you're not actually next to a wall, like you're not close to a wall, then it's not going to actually start wall hugging. So that's why, that's why we're going to try, that's why we're going to call it try, um, just because it might fail. Okay. So inside of here, the thing we want to take in is, ooh, wait a minute, why did I do that? One second. Um, ah, I see. Yeah, I just had a I had a variable that I was taking in here in my other project that I realized now that I don't actually need. So, okay, never mind. So what we want to do inside of here, first of all, we want to add a sequence node. And then we want to click on this guy and we want to add an output parameter. And the output parameter is going to return whether or not 
the wall hug was actually started, right? Because we're trying to do it, but it might fail. So we're just going to rename this to result. Maybe we could rename it to something more descriptive like uh, began. And then we want to drag off the then one, and we want to make sure we return false right here. So the reason we're doing this, you'll see what you'll see later, but whenever you do something like this and you have a sequence, and then you're, I'm going to put a bunch of stuff here off of this first then. Um, essentially what, we, what we're saying in this case is that if this first then ever doesn't actually return true, then it's going to eventually return false. So this is kind of like saying by default return false unless we specify otherwise somewhere up here. And it's just a lot easier way to make sure that it, the function always returns false if your code fails. So hopefully that'll make more sense once, once we get started. But um, so let's go ahead and start writing this. So the first thing we want to do for the wall hug component is we want to check which state the wall hug component is in, right? Because we made that enumeration before, which keeps track of what state it in. So it's either in none, you're either moving to the wall, or you're either on the wall. So if they try to begin a wall hug and we're already on a wall or we're already moving to a wall, we don't want to do anything, right? Because we're already engaged uh, in a wall hug. So just like we did for the third person character, we want to add a variable over here and we're going to call it wall hug state. And then we want to change the type of it to our wall hug state that we created. And then we want to make this private as well, since nobody else needs access. And then we want to drag this guy in, say git, and then we'll do a switch statement on it. And hook this up. So obviously, when they try to begin wall hugging, we want to make sure that it's currently in the none state, right? Because none means we're not already wall hugging. So we can drag off of this and continue what we want to do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the wall that's closest to us, right? Because when we press or when we press our button, so let's say we're over here by this wall and we press a button, we want it to be able to detect that there's a wall to our right and that that's the closest wall to us. And then we want to attach that wall. So we're going to make a little function over here. So hit this little plus button to make a function and we're going to call it find closest wall. So this function is going to take in a vector. So add a new input parameter of type vector. And we're going to call this the line trace start. So this is where the line trace is going to start from. That's going to look for the walls, basically. And then we also want to take in another variable, and we're going to make this an integer. And we're going to call this the num line traces. And so this is how many line traces it's going to perform. And this will make more sense once we actually write it. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to do a series of line traces around the player, going away from the player. And then it's going to find which one hits a wall. And then it's going to find which one is the closest distance to a wall. And that's going to make it so that it finds the wall that's closest to us. And then this num line traces variable is going to allow us to easily change how many line traces it does. Because we don't want to do too many, right? Because we, we don't need to do 100 line traces because that's just, you know, too precise. But we don't want to do only like four because then we might miss some walls. And this will make a lot more sense once we turn on the line traces so you can actually see what's happening. But for now, just know that that's what that means. And then also inside of here, we want to add some output parameters. So this is going to return to us a boolean for whether or not the wall was found so we'll say wall found it's also going to return to us the distance that we are from the wall so we'll return a oops not a double uh, float and we're going to call this the wall distance just dist for distance um, and we're also going to return the location of the wall so a vector and wall location and then finally we're going to return the normal of the wall so wall normal. Okay, so now we can actually go ahead and start writing this function. So let's move this guy over and sort of like we did in the other function here, let's just unbreak or unconnect this. To unconnect things, by the way, if you don't know how to do that, you just hold down alt and right click or no, left click and it'll unconnect it. You can always also just right click and I think there's an option break. Yeah, so that's all I did there. Um, but just like we did in this other function where we start with a sequence node, we're going to do that as well. So hold down S. I think I forgot to say this as well. If you hold down S and left click, it will create a sequence node. You can also right click and just search for sequence and it will show up. I always just use the short shortcut key. But again, we're going to do this type of deal. And then down here, we're going to hook up our default return value. So all of these variables here, we want to create local variables for. Well, not all of them, but most of them. So over here on the left, let's create a variable 
for the wall distance, except we actually want to call it um, the uh, how do I spell closest? We actually want to call it the closest wall distance because again, we're going to do a bunch of line traces here, and so we're going to get a bunch of different distances to walls potentially, and we want to keep track of which one's the closest because that's the that's going to be the wall that's the nearest to us. So we're going to call this closest wall distance. And we're going to also make this a float, of course, because it's a distance. And then we're going to return that right here. And then we want to do the same for wall location and wall normal. So an easy way to do this is actually just right-clicking and say promote to local variable. And make sure you hit local variable because we want these variables to be local to this function. Um, if you're not familiar with local variables, local variables, like I just said, they're, they're, they only exist inside of this function. So you can see I have my normal variables up here. And these exist in any function as long as I'm inside of this component. Um, but local variables don't. So if I were to go to a different function, if you're looking right here, if I go to this function, you'll see that the local variables go away because this function has its own set of local variables. And every time you call a function, the local variables essentially get reset to their defaults. So they're just kind of like variables that only hang around inside of the function you're in. And we and we want them in this case because we don't need these variables outside of this function. So let's just make a local variable for this. And we're going to call this the closest uh, wall location. And then we're going to make one more. And we're going to call this the closest wall. Model. And then whether or not a wall is found or not is going to be true if our wall normal is valid. So if this variable never ends up getting set, which we're going to write here in a little bit, then it's safe to assume that we never found a wall. So what we're going to say is we'll just copy and paste this guy. And then to check if it's been set, we're going to say vector is zero. So if the vector is zero, that means that it was never set to anything. And so that means that a wall was not found. So we actually want to do the opposite of this. So we'll say not Boolean and we'll hook this up. Okay, so this is what we're going to return from our function no matter what. Now we just need to set these three variables. So to do that, like I was saying before, we're going to do a series of line traces to find the wall. So let's do a for loop here. And make sure you select for loop and not for each loop because for loop is going to allow us to specify a number of times we want it to loop. So we want to loop from zero to however many times they told us to loop from. So let's right click and just say num line traces. And that just gives us a copy essentially of this variable. Um, but we actually want to do minus one. Now I I'm going to point this out here because this is where um, this actually becomes a problem. So in older versions of Unreal, um, I think even Unreal Engine 5 preview one, um, this is different. In preview two, I noticed that they changed how this works, the searching syntax works. Like normally you'd be able to say int minus int right here. Like you could type that and it would pop up, but you can see it doesn't pop up here. We only have options to decrement or negate int. So they've changed this to the way it works. So I apologize if you're in an older version, the search things are gonna be a little bit different, but hopefully you've, you're already familiar enough with Unreal to find these things. Um, but normally you just start like int minus int to subtract ints. But um, in the new versions, you have to just type subtract or multiply or add or whatever you wanna do. And then it gives you the node. And then it's kind of weird. You actually right click here and then you switch it. So if you wanna do an int minus a float, you could switch it like that. But I, of course, in this case, wanna do an int minus integer. And then now it changed the output type. So I don't know, I, I haven't quite figured out how to use this thing. It's a bunch of right clicking and switching. So I, ap I apologize if I mess up here because this is a little new and weird, but I just wanted to point that out in case we're on an older version. We want to do subtract and we want to hook this up to the last index. And the reason we're doing a subtract here is because if you look at this uh, for loop, if you see on the right there, that word inclusive, it's saying it goes from the first index to the last index inclusively, which means it includes zero and it includes whatever you pass here. So if we were to pass the number of line traces here, it would actually do one more than we wanted. So that's why we're doing minus one. Okay, so for each loop, and then essentially what we're gonna do for our line traces is the first line trace is going to be um, like in the direction we're, when we're looking. And then we're gonna do a series more that go in kind of a circle around the player. So to do this, let's just make a little function over here. I know I'm making a lot of functions, but it's gonna make it easier for us because we're actually gonna reuse some of this code. We're gonna call this line trace. And then we can make this private as well. One thing that's nice to do, if you come over here to this little gear icon, you can hit show access specifiers, and then that will show you which functions are private and public. Um, because most of these we want to be private. So like this 
find closed wall. We actually want to change this to private as well because we don't want to want to, we don't want anybody else calling this. But our try begin wall run, we obviously want it to be public because we need people to call that, like our character. Um, but anyways, back inside of our line trace function, we want to take in the start location of the line trace. So what? Where did it go? There it is. Okay. So we want to add an input parameter for start. And we also want to add one more. And this is going to be a float. And we're going to call this a rather long name, but we want to be descriptive. We're going to call it uh, rotation angle from forward. So I'll explain what this means after we write this code here. So what we want to do, right click, and we want to search for line trace by channel. And then we can hook this up. So our start is simply just going to be our start location. But our ending location is going to be some location that's been rotated around our player. So to do that, we want to drag in our owning player and we want to get his forward vector. So we'll say get actor forward vector. And again, this will make a lot of sense once we actually render it to the screen. You can see what's going on. And we want to take his forward vector and we want to rotate vector around axis. And then the angles and degrees is going to be whatever value they pass in here. And then for the axis, make sure you put a one in here for the for the z value. So we're basically rotating his forward vector around the up vector, which is going to rotate it around in a circle for us. And that will allow us to do line traces in a bunch of different directions to find the closest wall. And so our in location is simply going to be our start. So I'm just going to double click here to get a reroute node. And then we want to say, so normally you would say plus if you're in older versions, but they've changed it to add here. So you have to search for add. And we want to do add. And so we're going to add, um, let's see, well, this is going to go in here. And we want to add this value times like 100 or something. So that way the line has some sort of uh, distance to it. Now, normally, again, you would search for like float and then the multiply symbol. But in 5.2, you have to just search for multiply. And then this is where it gets tricky. This took me forever to figure out. So to change this, because we want to multiply this by a float, not a vector, you right click, you say convert pin, and then you select float down here. And you have to right click on the little yellow thing here. So float and that'll change it to a float and then you can put in here whatever you want so i'm going to put in 100 this is basically how long the line trace is so the bigger number you put here um it will if you put a really big number here you'll be able to attach to walls or start logging walls that are pretty far away from you so you don't want it to be too big 100 is probably a pretty good number and so that is that and then we can also turn on uh the draw debug type Let's set this to for duration, and then this looks good. So this way we can actually see what's going on with our line traces, and we can compile and save. And then back in our find closest wall function, we can now call this. So let's drag in our line trace. We'll hook this up. So our start is going to be this guy right here, our line trace start. So we can just drag up this and say get line trace, sorry, get line trace start. And then for our rotation angle, that's where we're going to do a little bit of math here to calculate a bunch of different rotation angles around our player. So to do that, it's pretty simple. We're just going to take this value and we're going to multiply. And then again, we need to change this to a float. So right click and say convert to float. And then we want this to be, um, this value here that we're multiplying by is going to be uh, whatever the number of line traces is. So we want this value. So we're going to right click and say get num line traces. And then we want to convert this to a float. So we'll say to float uh, this guy, the conversion to float. And then we want to divide 360 by this number. So we're going to say divide. And then we want to move this guy down here. And then this is going to be 360. And then this is going to be hooked up to maybe not. See, this is where it confuses me. We want this to be a float, float, and see, it's being stupid. Maybe we need to change the output type. I don't know how I'm supposed to do this, to be perfectly honest. This needs to be a float. We want this to be a float also, but it's not le letting me change it. Uh, maybe, no, how did I do this? <laughs> Sorry, so this is what I mean. I don't know how I'm supposed to actually use this thing. Maybe if we just make a new one from scratch. We want this to be a float. We want this to be an integer. Okay, there, that's what we want. So that's how you do it. You right click, 
I'm sure there's a better way, or maybe it's just a bug, but you right click, just make a multiply node, convert this guy to a float, and then convert the top left one to an integer. That's what we want. Okay, so delete this guy. Hopefully it doesn't change it when we start hooking things up. No, it did. Oh, why? Okay, undo that. Maybe this guy first, and then this guy. Ha ha. Okay. Success. Stupid Unreal Engine 5. We did it. This usually takes like two seconds, but now it takes like two minutes. Okay, so that's what we want. Make sure you get it looking exactly like this, otherwise it won't work. Sorry that took forever. Um, now let's actually run this so we can see what's going on here. Um, we're obviously not done with this function yet. Actually, where did we leave off? So it's just doing the line traces and it's just drawing them. Okay, perfect. So let's make sure all of this is hooked up and then we'll move on to part two. But let's see what we, uh, we can actually see these line traces now. So if we come back here to our third person character. We have, where did we leave off? So after this branch here, the where we check that we're not falling, we want to say, drag up this guy and say, try begin wall run. And again, if you don't have this guy, it's just this guy over here, you just drag him in. So it's just the wall run component. So we're gonna say, try begin wall hug. And then we wanna do a branch. And so if it actually began, then we wanna do the wall hug or we wanna set our state to wall hug. So let's actually give this a try real quick, hit play. And so if we press E, nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Um, if we're not falling, try begin wall hug. Let me make sure this is right. Oh, we're not actually calling it. So go inside of try begin wall hug. And then let's see here, try begin wall hug. So inside of this function, again, if we're not um, already wall hugging, then we want to call our find closest wall function. Uh, our start location is just going to be the location of our character. So we'll say owning character, get actor location. And then this is where you can see what this does. So I'm going to pass in like 10 here. And then hopefully this works now. So we compile, save, and run this. We press E. Okay, you can see we have 10 lines that come out from the center of our character. And so these are all the different line traces it's doing to try to find the closest wall. So you can see if we come over here to this wall and we press it, they're going to hit this wall. And you can see three of them hit the wall. But what we're going to do next in the next part is we're going to make it so that it figures out which one of these line traces hit the wall. Um, not, not first, but which one of them was the closest to the wall. So you can see the middle line is the shortest. So that's the one it's going to use. Because um, if we were over here and we were really close to the wall on the right and we pressed it, we even though it's hitting the wall in front of us as well, we'd want to start wall hugging the wall to the right of us because that one's the closest. Um, and you can see if we change this up to like 50, just as an example, and we press it, it does 50 line traces, which is obviously way too accurate or you know like way more precise than you need. But if you do something like four, you're going to potentially miss walls if you're like you know standing like at a certain angle. Like I can get it correct. Well, you get the point. Like you just want it to be. You just want it to be something that's semi-accurate, but you don't want to go crazy with it. So we're just going to say 10. Okay, so this is working nicely. We have our line traces set up, and we also have our animations already set up and imported. So I think I'm going to continue this uh, in part two. So I'll see you guys in part two.